Welcome to The Vault. This is where we talk about theories that have been proposed over the years. We will also provide new ideas that have some very strong circumstantial evidence. Today's episode covers the Sherry Bates murder. On October 30th, 1966, Sherry Bates was murdered near the Riverside, California Library. She was stabbed several times and her throat was slashed. Ten feet away from her body, a Timex watch was found. The time on the watch read 9.07. Other future crimes would mirror that of the Bates murder. On October 11, 1969, Paul Stein was dispatched to pick up a passenger in his cab at 9th Street. The passenger shot Paul Stein in the head with a 9mm gun. A size 7 glove was found in the cab. On October 25, 1970, Nancy Banalek was stabbed to death in her Sacramento apartment. Two days later, a Halloween card was mailed to the SF Examiner. Besides the crimes I mentioned being October murders, there are other connections. In the same month of the Bates murder, a confession letter was sent taking credit for her murder. The writer states he told his victim, It was about time. He asked, Time for what? And the reply was, Time for her to die. In December of 1966, a poem was discovered on a desk in the Riverside College Library where Bates worked. The poem mentions a red dress, also stating, She won't die this time, and Just wait till next time. A signature of R.H. is given under the poem. In April 1967, three letters were sent to Sherry Bates's father, Riverside Press, and Riverside Police. In each letter, Bates had to die. There will be more. Other cards and letters were sent. Some of these included obvious references to popular culture. Things like movies, lines from The Mikado, and even a Beatles song. In addition to the clues I mentioned above, many believe the killer left strange hints, such as the stamp that he used and the victims he targeted. Many even believe a comic book was used as a clue. Further investigations into common theories seem to indicate that they are correct. One connection made was the similarities between the Halloween card and issue 30 of a Red Mask comic. The comic has a roulette wheel that Lady Doom spins to decide how to kill the Red Mask. It has different ways to kill written on it, as does the Halloween card. The Halloween card has You Are Doomed written on it and depicts a skeleton with what looks like a mask on its face. More evidence has been found to suggest the red mask theory is correct. At least three more letters and two cards sent from the suspect indicate clues connected to other comic books besides the red mask. Two of these letters were sent in 1978. One was sent with a stamp that has the Liberty Bell on it, and the other to Channel 9 in Los Angeles. The FBI has not claimed definitely that these letters were sent from the Zodiac Killer. Even though they seem to be telling the same story, some consider them to be a hoax. The letter sent to Channel 9 has the numbers 1 through 7 written on the envelope. These are the same numbers I already mentioned. Stein's last dispatch was to 9th Street. A size 7 glove was left in his cab. The watch at the Bates crime scene showed the time 9.07. The Channel 9 letter, with numbers 1 through 7 on the envelope, has a numbered list of four people to kill. Number 3 is Pat Boone. A comic book does mirror the circumstances of the victims I mentioned. The words time and watch can be found in Daniel Boone, issue 9, on page 7. On the same page as the number used in front of Pat Boone is the name Nancy. In the same issue, a girl in a red dress gets away, but her father warns her, they could be the harbingers of more. In other words, there will be more. A Daniel Boone connection would explain the numbers one through seven put on an envelope. These numbers are located in place of a return address. The Channel 9 letter also came in an envelope with the letters CIA written on it. These are the first three letters of the alphabet used on page 7 of issue 9 of Daniel Boone. In the very first image on page 7, the girl in the red dress states, I can't outrace them. Earlier, I mentioned a Liberty Bell stamp. 
the Liberty Bell was named in 1830. Coincidentally, Nancy Banalik was reported to live at 1830 Bell Street. Thank you for taking a walk through the vault. Please visit us again as we have plenty of content to come.